Welcome to this week's Art Wisdom Podcast with Chris and Kat. And this week we are talking about copyright. Now, first of all, we must say that neither of us are lawyers. So what we're going to talk about is what we've learned, what we've picked up, what we've heard. So um, we're sharing from our own knowledge. Um, so copyright. I suppose we really should explain what copyright is. And it's a legal way of protecting um, the creative process. So if you're making an artwork, you can protect protect your artwork from anybody else using it commercially or non-commercially often copying your work do you want to expand on that Kat? yeah absolutely so um in principle right it's just the legal protection that and, and the interesting thing is is that it doesn't matter where you are in the world when you produce a piece of artwork it actually has automatic copyright mm -hmm. The challenge always usually comes is how do you prove it? Um, in the UK and in Australia, there's no way to actually register, you know. And I suppose in some ways, when you start to post your progress shots and your, you know, your work, you know, the work that you're doing or videos or all that kind of stuff actually online, whether it could be even social media, but there is some like online stamp of saying like you did this thing at this time, right? And that can be useful as like, like as an actual technical recording but also like having the physical tangible item it becomes a lot more complicated with digital stuff but with physical paintings a little easier can we just even just cl clarify the copyright thing a bit more because yeah. like copyright is something that you create it's not an idea that's called intellectual property so copyright is something that you can grab hold of whether it's digital whether it's artwork whether it's a song um so and when you see that little sign with a c that's what people put on to copyright but you don't actually even need to put that on once you right. actually create something and you are the author of that you automatically have copyright protection. That's, that's right. Sort of what goes into from what you're saying is, you know, to have proof of that is actually yours. You have um, drawings and sketches and, you know, the progress free, and so on. free stuff before your, your painting's finished, but you do all have that back thing of pictures to go, this is actually mine. Yeah, it's, it is always a challenge because um, it's very hard because most of the time when someone needs to be proved that they, you know, there's a, an infringement of copyright is firstly that they willfully know <laughs> that they're copying, you know, their, your work, you know, in a commercial way. Now, they could say, oh, I didn't know, and, you know, and, and whilst obviously it's not going to... Um, hold up very well in court it's actually it can be quite difficult to like prove that someone willfully stole your work even if they're using it directly so that's why um it's whilst you don't actually have to legally add your name to your artworks it's always highly recommended because people like once you've added your name to even an, any image that you upload online and I always do that I use um I use a Adobe Express. It's a little app on my phone and it just automatically adds my watermark before I upload it. And it's just two clicks and it's very, very easy. Mm. Um, but that way, people, you know, and, it, and it's really about like what in the worst case scenario, how do you go about protecting yourself? Obviously, everyone's automatically. So if you make any tangible work, whether that is painting, sculpture, piece of fashion, you know, piece of music even, um, once you've created something that's tangible, it's already got a copyright. But the question is, is that how do you make it so that it stands up? And in most places, you can't register it. So in particular, in the UK and Australia and across Europe, you can't register your copyrights. But you can in the US. And the US copyright system works slightly different, but along the same lines. So what you can do, so instead of having to sort of prove that you have lost money because someone else has copied you and that they did it like with willful intent to do so um what you can do is if you register in the us what you can do is get something called statutory damages so without even having to prove oh they made so much money out of my work or they caused me to lose so much money um 
statutory damages are before all of that is calculated. And a lot of times people will just stick to statutory damages as a way of saying, hey, this and is actually a good thing to do, though, because that's, you know, the other thing is that an expensive thing to do. And is it do you have to do it per piece of artwork? Yeah, you have to do it per piece of artwork. And it can be, you know, I don't know the up to date costs because I think there are different, there are also services that will do the paperwork and stuff for you. So it depends if you want to do the paperwork yourself. But between 30 to $80 to register per piece. Now, mm. if you're only making six pieces a year, then probably not so bad. But if you're someone that really is producing these, frequently let's say you make it one piece a day that's all that really does add up you know to yeah. keep that manageable you might choose to maybe only do your like top pieces and that's also an option too you know um but it's it's kind of one of those things where you have to weigh it up um the other thing that i think is really important to talk about is like the amount of time it takes to fight a case is very very yeah. difficult yeah i, th I think it would be really probably not not really a, an easy thing or for many artists to do or you know so it's like what what else do you do do you, you know it's you see someone copying your work so the yeah. first thing you could do you like is even just talk to them yeah, you can talk to them and, and discuss it. And I think all of those initial bits of contact are really important for if you are doing a later case to say, hey, this is my piece of artwork. I'm letting you know that you need to stop using it. You can't necessarily jump immediately into let's just sue them because it, you know, it's not, it doesn't normally work that way. Um, so to contact them and say, you know, and ask them to cease and desist whatever they're doing and say, hey, this is my piece of artwork you're using. You need to stop. Um, and if you've, because like, this is the other thing, you can register your artwork if you're in the US and you don't have to be in the US instantly. You can be overseas and register in the US. So a US company can't, but also that's the other thing is like, where is the individual based? Because I can tell you if you're trying to chase someone that's based in let's say China or someone that's based in a con like a country that doesn't necessarily recognize the concept of, of copyright as such you know not like in the European Union or, or you know in Australia where people take that stuff quite seriously so mm -hmm. that's the other thing as well you know but it has to be in the if it's in the US it has to be registered prior to the infringement um, before in order to like get the statutory damages now if you want to chase you know an actual copyright case it's going to be a very long drawn out thing and I think it's always a challenge, right? Because I don't necessarily want to sit here and say, it's not worth it, don't bother. Um, but in many cases, it might not be worth it. Mm -hmm. And I, I've had my artwork copied and stolen many times. And most of it was like solved with just a quick email. Um, but, uh, you know, and to let people know, you know, this is copyrighted artwork, mm -hmm. as is all of the stuff that I produce, just because you find it on Instagram. Oh, Facebook does not mean it's free to use. Yeah. Um, and of course, you can register things as, you know, a creative with a creative commons to allow people to use it, you know, to make it free for people. You can, you know, and people even make uh, NFTs and that kind of stuff if they're doing the digital stuff with those licenses kind of written in them as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there are people that make it purposefully available, but like I would say, you know, it's like, you can't just use someone's stuff online and just hope for the best. So most of the time you can just download almost like a template letter to help you write something appropriate to them to say, hey, I need you to stop doing this. Uh, you're using my design for product. Most of the time, these infringements really come up when it's around commercial activity. Non-commercial activity, then it's not really picked up by the courts as much um, unless there is like, unless it's being used in a way that will like, damage your brand but in that again it's a very difficult thing to prove you know well we do have a good um thing like with social media so if we see copies going up on instagram and facebook and even etsy you can report to those sites and 100%. you know shut down accounts so that's something that's like 
probably really yeah. easy as the first step because if people are um, copying your work and then they're putting it out there for sale they're usually on some social media site 100%. that's probably an, an easier way to to kick off to get that shut down like address them first and say you know this yeah. is what you're going to do because you copy my work and so yeah and I mean I've had someone on online do that for me to me and it wasn't for sale you know although they what they did is they used other people's content to build a platform build a social media account which they then use that account to sell products so it's like an indirect they like use your content to like grow their following if that makes sense okay. so um obviously I did what I normally do is I screenshot it. I shared it to my followers and said, hey, this is happening. And I've contacted the person and said, please take it down. And then I contacted Instagram. But by the time it took about a week for Instagram to uh, look through that copy copyright claim mm -hmm. and they'd already pulled it down. So they actually didn't get a strike in that case. And in hindsight, having realized that that person basically is a prolific thief and every piece of content they have is stolen from someone without permission and without credit. I feel like sometimes people can share your stuff and it, you know, they're giving you credit and they're driving traffic to you and, and it's really beneficial. Um, but there are times when people purposefully, they cut your watermark off or they don't include you in any of the text. So you get zero benefit and they're like reaping the rewards of your work. Um, I, in hindsight, I might have not told them first. I think I might have just gone to uh, Instagram and yeah. put in that claim yeah. because if someone gets a certain amount of those strikes it removes their whole account and I feel like for someone like the person that I was dealing with there was such a prolific thief that um and they only get away with it because they pulled it down before Instagram could catch them because yeah. once Instagram you basically go to their form and their help and you can add their like the link or the URL or whatever to the content but if that link is dead they can't do anything so that was a that was an interesting scenario but I've I've only ever after that I've only ever had one scenario and actually it's weird <laughs> someone used a photograph of my face when I was much younger and used it on a on a t-shirt for a big brand in the UK called religion oh yeah uh, yeah, and the worst part is they photoshopped me onto a naked woman oh. holding, two, no, holding two beer steins over her boobs. You can see anything. And it just said one for the road. Oh. But it was my face. It was weird. Oh. So um, I sent them a, a an invoice for a, a model release. <laughs> so <laughs> my face. Anyway, they decided that they didn't want to pay and they just pulled the product. But um, that was kind of a fun, <laughs> fun idea. That's bizarre, that. That's bizarre. So that's a bit different because like model. So and actually this is important for anyone that's uh, releasing products. Uh, if you have a model or someone modeling your products, so let's say you make artwork and you put it on a T-shirt or whatever, you really do need to get people to sign a model release. <laughs> Because people's likenesses is or is also something that's kind of protected as well. So that's something to know. Yeah. Um, and also, if you do workshops, when you do um, a class or a workshop, that copyright of the painting that you might do might be the copyright of the teacher that you've went to the workshop with. So you just ah. have to make sure of that as well. Do you have the rights? You know, if you do a beautiful painting and then you think, oh, I'm going to sell that painting need to check with whoever's doing the workshop if you have permission to do that yeah and I think you know a lot goes for just asking permission yeah, yeah. you know and also I think this is the other big question for a lot of artists is, is a lot of people work from photographic reference but mm. who owns those photographs and I mean especially for space art that I do is that you can't see the stuff with your eyes so the only way to do it is through an astrophoto and unless you're an astrophotographer it's not a skill you can just go outside and just you know just take a photo like take a photograph of a bird or something you can't do that with space because you need all this really high-tech equipment so that's also something but nine times out of ten if you are wanting to create a copy of something that pre-exists if you're working from even just a photographic reference asking and just making sure you give credit it mm. goes a long way 
Mm. And there's so many really sites if you don't want to do that, isn't there, for photographs? You know what there is? There is so, so many. But we are now getting into this, like, weird territory with AI art. Mm. So I don't know if you know any of this stuff. And I, it's funny because I am in two minds because I love AI and I love AI art. However, the way that AI art develops its training sets is by referencing actual art. But in many cases, the actual artists haven't given permission for their art to be used as training material. So the computer compiles and creates data sets from artwork that's technically stolen, yeah. <laughs> which is fine until it happens to your art. Mm. And it's kind of one of those weird things where you've got now, there's one specific artist who I don't, is, and I can't remember the, his name, I'll have to look it up at some point, but a lot of his artwork was taken and assimilated into a data set. And now the AI is pumping out artworks that look just like what he does. It's mm. like, yeah, and it, it's a very, and. So one of the interesting scenarios is because AI art, you're not, you're more an art director rather than the artist. Like the AI is the artist, you're the art director. Um, mm. So you can't copyright art made with an AI art generator as it stands. I've heard that one person was in the process of doing it, but I would find it very hard given the amount of content made by other artists that is most likely copyright written and used without permission so that's a whole new kettle of fish you can there are websites that allow artists to look up to see if any of their artworks have entered into these ai training libraries I've never as of that. yet i've not found any of mine but i found some of my friends artwork up in there and they're really upset because they didn't add it themselves and i don't even know how like i don't know it's sort of like once it you know it's trying to squeeze put toothpaste back into the tube you know once it's in the process i don't know how people can get it removed to be honest the the steps in order to do that i just don't believe they really exist at this moment yeah. I'm sure in the future hopefully they'll fix that but um that is also something I know that a lot of people are asking about when it comes to AI art. And even like, what if you use it as an inspiration to then paint from? I don't know, it's a good question. <laughs> use things from an insp inspiration. It just depends on how much likeness it is to the original. So you can use any art for inspiration, but if there's a substantial bit of it, and there's not even a number, not even a percentage, it's just like, I suppose if you look at it and go that bit, you can see the you can see the art in the other, yeah. and you've got to go. That's if you can see it, it it's a no no. I'd say because yeah, I think no number. People say five percent, ten percent, but there actually isn't any number. It's just like uh, the likeness or the yeah. So you it can, can be really hard because I think sometimes also you can create paintings accidentally that might look like something that you've seen ages ago might be in your subconscious and you just don't know and and that but that happens or and that must happen all the time I've done it I've painted pictures and then been like oh this is like this thing and not even intentionally done it and I've I'm I've had it done to me more than <laughs> more than 20 times yeah. well, so. okay well you know what it feels like then to get your art well so how do you feel and what's the first steps that you do when you go you see your art and it's somebody else's page and the cat matron's coming up on that on uh, page. so how do you feel what goes through you you know what at first I felt a bit sad and I think it, it is like because our artworks are like our babies a little bit the creations that we made and they're sort of part of our souls a little yeah. bit so it does feel a little bit sad at first. But then what I realized is I thought about what my, my purpose is mm -hmm. and realized that I need a million, you know, I want billions of people to look up at the stars. And if that means that more than one person's making space art and we're all working at it together, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I think that also the approach to whether it's a good thing or a bad thing differs depending on how successful you are as an artist. And I mean, financially successful in this one main, because you can be successful in many other ways, right? Yeah. But um, if you're financially struggling and then you see someone 
profiting from your artwork, that yeah. hurts a significantly larger amount than if you're doing really, really well. And then you see someone else, you're like, whatever, I don't care, I'm, I'm sorted. Yeah. The stinger really comes if you are scraping by and then you see someone do that. That can be probably one of the hardest things. And I, I actually recognize that that's actually why most of the time when someone copies it, and even when people copy my stuff and then sell identical paintings, yeah. I don't copy every single one of my paintings. <laughs> so, I'm just like, whatever, you know, it doesn't bother me because yeah. I have such a strong fan base and I have so many clients and like, I can't possibly cater to everyone anyway. And and let's be That's honest. Great point, Kat, isn't it? It's like sort of what comes up for you if somebody is doing this to you. What is it that's making you upset? Is it that that they're more successful than you? Is it, you know, what actually is it? Because there's always more to these things. Always. Yeah. So, you know, there's all of that kind of thing that comes up. And then, you know, sort of feeling like, you know, you like we all want a bit of attention, especially, you know, when the algorithm changes, it's hard to get attention. If someone gets attention for something that's actually yours, it can be very, you know, it can be a bit, it can really smart. And I can feel that as well. But um, the truth is, is that the only way I have personally been able to beat people that copy my work is by being three steps ahead of them at all stages. They're always copying old versions of me and not the new evolution of me. And I, I kind of use it to spur me to create new, exciting things that do not exist already. Mm. Um, but I would say that there's less, I'm less worried about other artists because actually my whole shtick is I want to inspire artists to paint space. And if that, you know, and, and then, you know, like the truth is, is that there are a million people that paint like Bob Ross. But yeah. you never look at that, those paintings and go, well, that's such and such a person. You go, oh, that looks like a Bob Ross painting. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. in some ways, there are all these people doing work that most people will attribute to you in the foot anyway, right? In their psyche, if you think about it, that you just... Min, you just yeah. So you've got millions of like matrons out there. Right? Hopefully. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want hundreds of thousands of them. <laughs> um, the challenge, I think, really comes not necessarily from artists, Mm. um but more so from corporations you've got a lot you hear a lot of things like Shein and uh, fashion brands taking artists designs and I you know and I've had this also <laughs> but taking your designs and then you know you you're searching through for a new skirt and then you go wait that's or like someone more often someone will message you and say hey I think you know, you do a collab with this person, you look at it, and you realize your artwork is on something that they are mass producing now. Mm. Um, and that can be so again, like I feel like the approach to dealing with like there's different levels of approach depending on like who it is that you're dealing with. Mm. Hopefully it's a design that you've registered, fingers crossed, you know. Mm. But if not, that's not it's not like all hope is lost, mm. but certainly it's like if it's a if it's a big corporation that's ripping you off, I would always seek legal advice first before taking action. And even if it's just uh, a quick consultation, there's a lot of places that will do free consultations uh, mm -hmm. just to get a, a test the water so that they can give you some the beginning steps. Mm -hmm. um, and I would always do that first before taking action personally. But as I said, it's like different if you know, old mate down the road just wants to have a go at doing a bit of painting and just is giving it a go and you know whatever versus mega corporation trying to like produce hundreds of thousands of items with your design on like they need totally different approaches even though they're still covered by copyright in both cases yeah. I yeah. feel like you need to treat them differently mm. for sure and, and copyright um like it's it is to protect you but then you, if you're doing anything personally if you want to practice copying people's art you can totally do that totally do that you just can't sell it that's right and even then I think that there's it can be you feel a bit shy but it, there's it, it's just it is good to ask you mm. know and um just say hey I don't I don't want to I just love your style I just I would love to do something similar but I don't want to sell it I'm just doing it for practice and most people really appreciate it you will get some people that will just say outright no don't do it right. and you got to respect that you know 
But the truth is there's so many artists out there and um, there's so many places to find inspiration. So many photographers, like there are a lot of photographers who are, there's, you know, of course there are ones that do not want to be copied, not one little iota and that's a-okay. But for the majority, if you're taking, uh, you know, you're copying work from a photographer, it's a big honor for them, for an artist to actually come and paint something or draw something from their work. You know, it, it elevates what they're doing, right? A little bit. So, but again, I feel like asking permission yeah. is the most, because once you've been given permission, you know, it's such a different kettle of fish. You know, in one case, I actually did do something similar. I went to someone and asked permission to draw um, an eclipse and I drew it and then I posted it. And then someone had said, oh, that's my eclipse. And I was like, oh no, I asked this other person for permission. And anyway, it turns out that I got, I'd asked the wrong person for permission. <sighs> so, so, so was they were it very... the, did the other, fir- the person you asked copy off the other one or? No, or... no, no, no. It was just that the reference photo had the wrong name on it. Someone oh. had uploaded it oh, online. So you tried. The name was it's the wrong person. So I'm gonna copy, you know, do whatever photo, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it's fine." <laughs> uh, <laughs> only to find out later, I copied someone else. Um, you know, and that was just solved, solved really quickly by uh, I just I gave it an apology because I actually didn't mean to, and and actually now I've been I am only really painting from my own photo reference, but you know it was it did feel super embarrassing, and I was like, oh god. But, you know, all I did was I put up a post online and I said, look, this is the work of, you know, this photographer. And I'm so grateful because, yeah, in the end, he was like, it's totally fine. He's like, it's a great drawing. So, you know, thankfully. Um, but I was like, if not, I would have had to just be prepared to bin it. And it was a month of work. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it pays to double check first, even though it can be so embarrassing. You can feel a bit embarrassed and also you you never know if, if someone will get back to you. Um, but uh, I always say just just make the contact in as many different methods as you can if you want to copy something. Um, and actually, sometimes you find it be- is the beginning of a beautiful relationship. That's and actually, it's something... being a bit brave, if you do feel like that, you just have to. Yeah, just. just yeah. Do it. You just have to jump in and just go for it. But yeah, I, I do think there's two different approaches. I recommend like if if there is everyone's got a few pieces that they think are absolute bangers you know amazing amazing artworks um there's nothing wrong with getting those registered you register them with the U.S. copyright office mm. and that's really the only way and, and those that like the U.S. has relations with other countries and as a result those agreements are you know usually um you know they sort of honor those agreements but it's not over every single country you know and it it depends on where the person is you know living again like you can register it with the U.S. copyright office but if the person doesn't live in the U.S. or in a related state that has some sort of uh, international agreement then it's going to be not it's not going to be worth it but it will certainly stop anyone in the U.S. copying your work and you can seek statutory damages if you really wanted to but again I think sometimes unless it's like a major corporation the person you're suing often doesn't have a lot to give in return and the amount of energy you have to put into fighting it Mm. you do have to ask whether it's actually worth it although again always seek legal advice first if you think it is like a particularly serious and egregious breach but yeah that's the other thing is like how much energy do you want to donate to those not just the like you know yeah. yeah you could be spending that time making new pieces mm. um it's it's a hard one you know um we should mention as well like um when you're selling your work that you don't sell the copyright to it it's oh, 100%. if you do want to sell the copyright but i know 99 of the time like i'll never sell the copy i, I will never sell the copyright so it's up to you. You might decide that you want to sell a copyright, but that entitles them, the person who's bought your painting, that they can make copies, they can put it on products, they can do whatever they like with it. If you, you know, when I think we both do this, do our certificate of authenticity, we'll put on it that the copyright is the um, reserved to the right of the artist. Yeah, all rights reserved the artist. Um, and 
I actually have it in my contract. So when I sell an original, I sell my original with a contract and the contract literally stipulates those things. It says, you know, all rights reserved. The artist explains the details of what that is. So, you know, you're not allowed to reproduce it. You know, because like if you bought a painting, you know, if you bought the moment, like let's say you bought the Mona Lisa. I mean, the Mona Lisa is probably a bad example because it's past the uh, amount of time but let's say it's more a modern piece, a Banksy, for instance. And in fact, actually, this happened. This is, this is a really interesting thing. Banksy had his artwork copied by Gap. They used a copy of his artwork in, and they basically said, you cannot sue us because you're an anonymous artist. <gasps> oh, that's interesting. Take it down, see yeah, see how that's played out, yeah. Well, they've obviously thought about that and passed it through their lawyers. <laughs> Oh, I was like, Banksy is mad. It's, it's a dumb idea. Like, doing that is stupid mm -hmm. um, because Banksy has millions and millions and millions of disgruntled followers. And they've been ba basically plastering anytime anything that Gap comes up, any ad for Gap, every post, every social media. Why are you copying Banksy? Why are you scamming? Why are you ripping off artists? Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh God, we've got this PR nightmare on our hands. Like, Baxi dealt with it in a whole different way. I mean, he used, like, his influence and his follower base to really protect his artwork. But that was something that's I've never seen that done before, but also kind of fascinating. Yeah. Okay. So, but so it's... The, so the copyright is still with you, the artist, when you sell your artwork. Very, very important. Absolutely. Now, I have created a trust. I have the Catherine Machen Trust that owns the IP to my artworks so that I can pass my IP along when I die, um, which is a bit forward planning. <laughs> right? But you can do that as well, you know, so you can transfer your rights. And I mean, not to get too deep and dark, but that is something that people have to think of as an artist is succession planning and who's going to own your estate. You know, and there are, uh, can, you know, in particular, like well-known artists will find people that are like almost conservators of their artwork and they will manage the collection, you know, mm. and they will be become like the art dealers for that artist's estate. And that and that's quite a big responsibility. But again, it's like um, when you sell an art piece, you're not selling your rights to reproduce it. It's like if you went to... You know, as an example, you go and you buy a, a Blu-ray CD. Blu-ray CD, God, how old am I? Jeez. Anyway, I just thought Avatar was being released. Anyway, so you go out and you buy Avatar. It doesn't mean that because you've got that Avatar CD or disc or whatever, not that people use that anymore, you can't go and then reproduce it. You know what I mean? Because you don't... That old. <laughs> I know, but I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, what's a relevant... Thing. but you know what I mean like so for instance if you downloaded a song on Spotify mm. you don't own the rights to you know duplicate it and then share it with other people you don't have the rights you, can, you have the right for you to stream it on your own device mm. um and I'm trying to think of like another like relative thing <laughs> but all I could think of was CDs then so old-fashioned but <laughs> the point is is like you you know you don't go and buy like if you buy a book off someone let's say you buy you know Harry Potter you don't have the rights to then duplicate the book and sell it yourself. That's the same with art, yeah. Right. So you don't you don't own the intellectual property. It really belongs to someone, the person that created it, right? And of course, those rights can be bought and sold, and you can license the rights to things, which we will do in another episode. Um, but on the basis, when you sell an artwork, you know, and that, I think people that are inexperienced in art don't even realize this. People that are purchasing art might not know this. And I think that's why it's really important to have a contract of sale when you sell a piece. Mm. More so that you don't have these problems because I think half the time they happen because people don't actually know. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Top tip number one, every piece of artwork you produce, as long as it is, it is an original piece, is already has copyright de facto you don't need to do anything extra it does help if you post it or register it obviously if you keep it hidden from the world no one's going to know that you've made it and it'll be very hard to prove in court number two is that if you do really want to register it you can with the u.s um copyrights office but again 
it will allow you to seek statutory damages if someone copies you um but it's you know it still costs per artwork it still takes time and energy to do that you may or may not want to do it depending on the particular piece mm -hmm. um number three is if depending on the scale of what's happening and who's doing it to you it depends on whether you just put in a a message to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever social media site, if it is on a social media site, have it taken down. Or if it's being sold on an art auction site or even if it's on eBay or Etsy or whatever it is, you can contact them. I'm not sure how good they all are. I know that the social media sites I've dealt with, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all that stuff, they're actually genuinely very good. But they do take, you know, maybe a week or two to actually get around to doing it. So it depends, you know, if you want it to be, if you want they, them to actually put a strike against that person, maybe because they're prolific thieves, then mm -hmm. you might not want to say anything at first. Um, yeah. Depends, yeah. right? You see how it does. Um, if not, if if all else fails, if it's someone that's just, you know, a small time artist or it's someone where you think, you know, it's not great that they're copying, it's a bit rubbish, but, you know, it's not something that you want to, you know, you feel like they should be punished or such for. You can just contact them and say how upset you are and buy it and, and just be honest and frank and and just try to listen to understand more than anything. And, and it might be the beginning of a beautiful relationship and on the flip side of that is if you want to copy someone's work please just ask it is terribly embarrassing to ask i get it but it is even worse for them to come to you after you've put all that time and effort in being like excuse me i've just been because if you think no one's going to find out you would be you like you'd be surprised i get emails all the time <laughs> from people from my followers and they say oh it's such a such copy work <laughs> like I'm like, oh, you know. you've got other people sort of letting you know it was, fabulous you yeah. just like that one with my face on that t-shirt it was a friend that said oh I bought the t-shirt because I thought how funny it's your face <laughs> um oh well, it's your twin and I looked at it and I was like it's not my twin it's me <laughs> <laughs> you can't you just cannot get away with it you know it, not in today's media it's just a click of a button before someone else knows so just even if you feel a bit embarrassed just write it and just click send and just don't think about it and if they say no it's totally fine don't worry about it and um, there'll be more things for you to do um yeah and then also if you're going to be taking on a big corporation um you know or if it's something that you think is particularly serious or egregious do go and get seek legal console first it really does help because there are different things that you can do you know that you that might not be as obvious and sometimes all it needs is a very seriously worded letter from a legal firm for someone to be like okay absolutely we are going to stop immediately mm -hmm. um obviously when you want to seek damages that's where it becomes a little bit more complicated but if someone is making let's say someone's made half a million dollars off your artwork you absolutely should have a claim to some of that if it's done without your permission for sure so but you know if someone's made 20 bucks <laughs> you know from you you yeah. know it's going to be difficult the legal fees are probably going to be more than that so <laughs> oh and then the last thing is Look, you don't have to add your name and a copyright stamp onto your artworks, but I do recommend every single time you upload to social media, just, I know it can be difficult to remember sometimes, but it's just a few clicks. There are apps, like I said, I use the Adobe Express app on my phone. It just automatically adds it in. And I can tell you what, it, if you do actually want to take someone to court um, because of it, if you've got one of those on it, it is very hard for them to say that, you know, willful ignorance because they literally took a piece with your actual recommended. Not 100% necessary. You can technically, you know, still covered without it, but it makes it a lot easier when you get to court if you're going to go that way. And I guess the last thing is, do you really want to spend time and energy on it? Or do you just want to carry on moving forward? Um, I've chosen... I've just chosen personally to either send a quick message and start up a relationship that way and then just just carry on forward because at the end of the day, I've got bigger fish to fry, usually. <laughs>
moving on to the next stage of you and yeah yeah that was all that was many more than three points but many I more. and I think you've covered everything that we've talked about today because all I was going to say was exactly the same as you so oh sorry Chris <laughs> fine it's like it was all relevant so it's like um yeah we'll leave it there. anything else you want to add no, I, honestly, it was all of those points that you've just made there were, you know, we covered it all. I was on a roll. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Well, have you guys had any copyrighted issues with your artwork? Have you copied someone's artwork and they've got back to you? If you've had any challenges with that, let us know in the comments. What are your questions? Anything come up for you? Um, next episode uh, we are going to be answering the community's questions so please do find us in the social media comments add your questions and we're going to be picking those out and answering all your deepest most curious questions on how to do art things and business <laughs> all of this anyway i will catch you next week from me and chris bye See you next week